So good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for being here. Um, so the, for the past, uh, this is Wednesday, for the past few nights I've been um, making some visits to uh, roll call, the evening roll call, um, and uh, talking with officers, uh, reinforcing the message of uh, our relentless uh, effort to reduce violent crime uh, in the city. Uh, Hope my, my goal was, um, I did this with uh, Councilman uh, Brandon Scott as well as a council president who uh, wanted to make sure that the officers on the street understood that, uh, that we have the utmost respect for uh, their, their efforts and their integrity and we continue to work in partnership for a safer city. And um, you know, my commitment to reducing violence in our city remains steadfast. Um, you know, it remains a top priority, and I am uh, committed to making sure that um, you know we have a safer city, and and we'll do it in partnership. Um, that's about it. I was I just wanted to say that, and then we can open for questions. Um, Mayor, the department, of, uh, the controller was critical of the department of public works for not meeting with auditors. Do you know why they didn't meet with auditors and what went on? Right? Yeah, that was, was yeah, that was the the first that that I had heard of that. I know that. The, a similar uh, a similar statement was made the, the week prior, and it turned out that all the questions that had been posed to uh, our agencies had, had been addressed. So I was unaware of uh, of this issue. We we strive, I strive to find ways to work uh, together, uh, you know, across um, you know across agencies and departments and uh, with other officials. And, um, you know, I, I, I'll definitely, we'll definitely look into that because that was the first time I'd heard about that. Mayor, why do the water bills in a three-year um, um, cluster, what, it's always been done, or at least for, for the last several years, it's been year to year. Why, why do it three together? Is, um, is this so you don't have to vote on it for a, a long time? Or what, what, what's the purpose of clustering it like this? We're trying to anticipate uh, need, and the city's independent auditor recommended a nearly identical double-digit uh, increase over that three years. Mayor, yeah, just generally, um, I mean, you hear the kind of the rank that it goes on in that meeting. It's really a, re a relatively new phenomenon uh, from the public, but there are a lot of comments and a lot of criticism of the city's overall tax and fee structure, mm -hmm. which just increased substantially. Uh, on July 1. Um, and how do you respond to that? That, that the, the overriding, uh, an, an overriding concern is a much larger picture that this is a really expensive place in which to live and do business. Do you agree with that assessment? I want this to be a functioning place to do business, a fiscally sound place uh, to do business. And when um, you know, financial experts tell us that we're headed in the direction of many cities that are uh, in receivership or have uh, financial managers that have taken over. Uh, to do nothing, I think, would be irresponsible. Um, so I expect there to be unrest. I expect there to be rancor, but I don't want the disappointment and the frustration and the sadness that cities like Detroit have to face. And in order to uh, put the city on the right financial step, you can't do that without making tough decisions. You're not going to make everybody happy. But I will not allow our city to go down that road. Are you suggesting that Baltimore is on the same path as Detroit? I'm suggesting, without making the major reforms that we are doing, that we would be headed in the same direction as several cities around the country who were not willing to make the tough decisions, that were not willing to rank uh, uh, you know, rustle, uh, ruffle feathers. Uh, you can't make everyone happy and have major reform at the same time. My focus is on making sure I leave Baltimore in a better condition than I found it. We know what the uh, financial future of the city is. Uh, we know based on what the financial experts are telling us, as well as what you can see going on around the country. And uh, if it means ruffling feathers in order to get our city back on a place where we can grow again, where we can make the investments that we need in order to have a, uh, a sound financial footing, 
Um, you know, I, I'll take that, but what I won't take is knowing what's coming down the road and doing nothing about it so nobody's mad at me. Mayor, as you said, the auditor recommended a double digit increase as well, mm -hmm. but slightly less. Slightly. Why not go with that slightly less number? Uh, because what they were recommending, unfortunately, was not fiscally sound. Uh, they recommended a 30-day um, basically reserve, and out of the 99 uh, jurisdictions that were surveyed, only three of those do that. Um, we, in order to get the most affordable uh, financing, in order to get the most, to get the, be most effective and efficient with the resources we have, we have to get good rates on our uh, financing for these infrastructure projects. So if we put ourselves in a category of a slight, you know, with those, you know, three out of 99 that think it's okay just to have a 30-day reserve, we're not, we're not doing that. We're not putting ourselves in the, the position to say that, you know, that, that this is a safe investment. Do you know why the county residents aren't subject to the same collection procedures that city residents? I know. I think uh, maybe Colonel Fox or, yeah. or uh, Mr. Chow can Mayor, speak to that. Mayor, we have a system here where... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, there was sorry. A... oh, I mean, you know, I just wanted to get a little... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, wanna, you're going to answer. I'm to... sorry. The East Jurisdiction has its, has its own, uh, own laws that they have to... Uh, respond to we are we are provided of war to the uh, to the uh, the surrounding jurisdiction. So the charges they all have to pay for the operation, for the maintenance, for the capital program. But as far as taking property within another jurisdiction, that's subject to the laws of that jurisdiction. Right. And so we 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 work with the surrounding public works officials whenever there is an overdue bill and, and they go within their their laws to to collect right but overall at the end of the year we do a reconciliation and we are paid for the operation maintenance capital programs that we have we understand that you can't place liens on properties right. in baltimore county right but um, why not send a bill to the county government and say hey you're, you're they are aware they get printouts from us of who oh. owes what yes but did they make an effort to collect uh, that I don't have an answer for. Does the city? But well, we work with them when, whenever, whenever there is a overdue bill. We work very closely with the DPW on that and trying to collect. I know right for the city of Baltimore, we are working with finance, and we have an active committee that is addressing, especially those big overdue bills, uh, specifically addressing those. Okay, folks, we have time for two more questions. Thank you. That actually um, is the basis for my question. We have a system, a water system, which is a, an expensive system that has uh, uh, county residents depending on the city, and yet there are really two different payment systems, procedure systems. My question is, and this is not a new idea, do you think it's time for the region to consider a regional water authority? Mm, no. Why? Um, I haven't heard of a good reason why. Um, you mentioned you've set up a special committee to go after these overdue uh, bills. This is an established uh, committee, uh, consistent of finance and uh, mm -hmm. consistent of finance and public works, and they work on all the larger overdue and bills. Because and, and the law department and the law department, because mm -hmm. we deal with a lot of, with commercial entities too. Mm -hmm. so. Over what period of time do those overdue bills go back to? I don't have that right off the top. Decades? Huh? No, I don't, I don't think it's decades. Absolutely. All right, folks, if you have any follow-up questions about water, we have uh, yep. Director Fox is here and uh, Mr. Chow also. Um, they're happy to uh, sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and go on uh, director on any background details that you might need. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So Mr. Cal, do you know how delinquent those water bills are? What, what we're generally focusing on are delinquents. <laughs> what we're generally focusing on are delinquents that passed 260 days. Those are the accounts that I would go after first. And certainly, uh, there, there are accounts that way over the 260, but that is the threshold that we use to gauge for basically collection. Uh, process. So there are more than $11 million in big commercial water bills that haven't been paid according to this report. Um, 
uh, are you guys ratcheting up your efforts? I mean, how? Well, why are these being allowed to go on paper for so long? I know, I know one big account is in, is in bankruptcy, but. Right. Well, a number of them are under bankruptcy protections and so on, all that, which our law department uh, is basically handling those commercial accounts. And, and as the director has stated, you know, we are, we are basically looking at all of our collections effort, our turnoff policies, you know, and basically revising them and updating them. And, and uh, our intent is to go out aggressively, try to collect these. Uh, stated earlier also at the uh, at the board estimate is that even if we collect these funds this is really one time infusion it's it's really not for a sustained you know long term uh, sort of uh, uh, continuous investment the vast majority of the delinquencies are residential am I correct uh, actually in terms of dollar in terms of that number of accounts you're yes. right but in terms of well, dollars are these folks that are Financially unable to pay their water bill? Are they vacant properties? What are they? I mean, they're kind of typically. There, there, are, there are a number of accounts, for example, they, uh, they raise concerns about the accuracy of the meters, and, and which we are going through systematically addressing them, and we have been addressing them for the last couple of years. All the meters are being read now, and that's really part of the reason why we are investing. Part of this rate increase is investing into our automated meter infrastructure, which, you know, then we get, you know, real-time reads on a continuous basis and uh, which will help the residents for nothing else, for conservation purposes and other things. So are a lot of those basically contested bills people who think that they've been overcharged? No, not all of them, not, no. not the no. large, you know, there are a portion of it is like that and then there are a portion of it simply not able to pay and then that we are certainly encouraging them to set up, for example, payment arrangement payment plans with the Department of Finance. Yeah. And so we, we are working on multiple fronts trying to uh, trying to collect these yeah. outstanding yeah. debts. Let, let, let me just say one, one thing, and Mr. Chow kind of covered. We, the, the approach that we've taken has been more of a more of a customer friendly type approach that we are taking. Once we identify folks that, uh, that uh, have uh, overdue bills, uh, they, we reach out, they have options, we inform them of, of their options. Some, some of them have already taken the, those options and have not, and, uh, and uh, you know, like payment plans and things like that, and then fall behind on the payment plan. But we do try to reach out, inform them of the programs that we have, and get them involved in those programs. So, and we have, we have increased our customer service staff just to accommodate that, reaching out to those that have complaints. If they have a valid complaint and they think that they're uh, being overcharged, we go out, we double check, and then we afford them the opportunity to have an informal hearing. That's a, that's a hearing that uh, I, as a director, put into water and wastewater, and if there's any information that they can provide, then I have an independent uh, uh, independent person do an assessment and then tell me what the reduction should be or should we hold on to what we've been charging. So that process worked very well uh, for, for those of you that have water main breaks or their private, uh, uh, some leaks, things like that. It works out pretty well for Given them. Given the uh, amount of increase, can you comment on why you wouldn't meet with the controllers, auditors prior to this? This hearing then. Was it intentional? I mean, there was some laughter amongst yeah, people when she was saying, what was this a joke? Or, no, there was never the intent. Uh, the, first of all, we took a number of months to come to this conclusion in terms of this rate increase that we need for the next three years. And uh, we, we, we spent a lot of time scrubbing the data and looking for uh, other ways, alternative ways or efficiency gains to try to shape the percentages. It is only when we have a final product that we can engage Department of Audit to have something to, for them to look at. I mean, it's, it's no reason to engage auditors when you are still in the work in progress, which took a little bit longer than what we generally taken, slightly so because the fact that uh, we, we're taking a very comprehensive look in terms of our infrastructure needs, our water, new water plants needs, our, our water main replacement, or asset management, all these programs are huge programs that that we are tackling right now. So, um, so we are certainly on the same page as far as working in partnership with the controller's office. We are, 
but the fact that we had to have a working product in order to sit down with them, which took a little bit longer than... So, but they, they delayed speak. the meeting for a week um, because of that, and mm -hmm. you still refused to meet with her people? I mean, no. did you not meet with them? No, no I think... No, it happened yesterday, right? It was yeah. a meeting, yeah. and it was supposed to happen, but, and they were left waiting. What, what, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, I mean, th that... Uh, certainly, I'm hearing from my staff, and I'm certainly hearing from the controller staff, and, and I think this is a miscommunication um, sort of on both parts. I think our folks are are um, are suggesting some time, you know, in, in yesterday to me and the controller's office to suggest that sometime the time just didn't match up. And then I think the, there was some miscommunication on, yeah. on both parts. The, part. the, the fact that, that there, was, there was conversation going between both, we didn't refuse to meet with them. Uh, but there's con there was conversation going between both the DPW and the auditors uh, all day yesterday about when we could have a mutually agreed upon time to meet. So that's uh, it. We never refused to meet with them. The so, only outside audit that has been done at your agency is by the controller's office auditors. Am I correct? There's been no other independent review of your finances uh, over the past. No, Next we are, we are we are audited every year, and it, it's through Department yeah, of Finance. Department of Finance. Yeah. But there's been no independent audit. Well, uh, the, the Department of Finance uh, has a, a third party external auditor basically reviews our, our finances on an annual basis. That's how we can that's get not a really an efficiency audit. Am I correct? No, it's not as efficient. It's, 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 it's a financial. It's audit. financial. Correct. Audit. It's, financial. Audit. it's to reconcile your yeah, correct. Right. Yeah, it's a financial audit. Okay guys, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.